How to add acoustic liner or wrap to your PractiCAD fittings. There are two ways of adding wrap or acoustic lining to PractiCAD fittings. The first way is through the item box. The second way is through the AutoCAD property box. In this tutorial, we're going to go over both. We're going to go into the fitting bin and we're going to grab a piece of rectangular duct. Then we're going to go into the item box. Currently notice that the duct we are holding is 36 by 18 width by depth. Now what we're going to do is scroll down until we get down to the acoustic lining parameter. Now there are two parameters here, acoustic liner and insulation. We use the acoustic liner field for liner going on the inside of duct and we usually use the insulation field for liner or wrap going on the outside of duct. There are ways to utilize both, however, it's recommended acoustic liner for the inside, insulation for the outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the acoustic liner, we click right next to it, and now we get the drop down menu. Here we're going to see the list of all of our liner types, and there are separate tutorials on modifying and designing liner types and styles. What we're going to do here is we're going to choose one inch acoustic liner. Once we do that, you'll notice the PractiCAD will already have adjusted the width and depth to fit the liner. What was once 36 by 18, when we add one inch acoustic liner, is now going to be 38 by 20. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place this fitting on the drawing. Once we do that, you should be able to see not only the fitting, but the liner inside. Now the way it works in PractiCAD when you're drawing is the liner is going to stay on every fitting until we shut it off. For example, if we put a new piece down or hit C for continue and continue off an existing piece, we're going to continue to have that liner. However, if we're going to come into the fitting box, and then we're going to shut the liner off for one piece, that piece will not get it, and then the piece after that will not get it. So as long as we draw now, there will be no liner. So the mechanism is usually turned on or turned off. Remember that at any time you can adjust the liner, both insulation or acoustic liner, by simply clicking on the fittings you'd like to change, double clicking to get the AutoCAD property box to open up as we've done here. And if you go to your technology properties, you're gonna see under acoustic liner, exactly what we've placed. So if we'd like to remove it, we would just open up this drop down menu and we're going to select nothing. Same thing if we'd like to add wrap. If we'd like to add wrap to the fitting, instead of using the acoustic liner property, we're actually going to go down to the insulation property. And here we're going to choose one inch wrap. And by doing that, Practicat's simply going to add it to the existing fitting. So we can edit the fittings and edit the liner at any time. If we're going to add wrap from the item box, it would be the identical way we did it with acoustic liner. We'd simply go into the fitting, choose the fitting we'd like in the fitting bin. We're going to come over here, scroll down to where we see insulation. We're going to select one inch wrap, and now we can simply place this duct on the drawing, and as we continue, we're going to get wrap added as we go. That'll conclude the tutorials on how to place down acoustic lining and wrap. How to adjust your liner for visual style. There are three main things you need to pay attention to in order to make sure that your liner shows up on the drawing properly. In this tutorial you can see we have three pieces of duct, each have a one inch acoustic liner on the inside. What we're going to do is exit out of the AutoCAD property box and we're going to point over the three main factors. The first factor is the actual line type. You will notice that in the layer box under the accessory liner, we have chosen the line type hidden dash two. Now there are tutorials that teach you about the layer box and there are tutorials that teach you how to load the specific AutoCAD line type you need. What you have to make sure is that you've selected the proper line type so that AutoCAD represents that line. In this particular case, it's a dashed line. The second thing you must do is make sure that the LT scale for that line type is correct. Currently, on my template, if we type in LT scale in the command line, you can see that the template is set at LT scale factor 12. For this template, that seems to work well for the spacing of my liner. You'll notice that there are also tutorials on how to use LT scale. If the LT scale is wrong, for example, here we're going to set the LT scale to 1, you're going to notice that that looks like one continuous line. So choosing the right LT scale is very important. Usually you'd save that directly to your template. Here we're going to change it back to 12 where it should be. And now I can see my line type as we want it, a hidden times two dashed line. The last thing is the most common reason why your liner wouldn't be dashed. If you have not chosen the proper AutoCAD visual style, 
you're not going to see your liner. Only the 2D wireframe visual style is going to represent these lines correctly. That is one of the reasons, once again, we always plot in 2D wireframe. What we're going to do here is switch it to 3D wireframe for a minute, and now you can see that the liner is one solid continuous line, which is not what we want. So you must make sure that you keep it in 2D wireframe. So going over that again, three main things. First, make sure you've got the proper line type in your layer box. Second, make sure you've got the proper LT scale on your drawing. And third, make sure you're in 2D wireframe. If you have all three correct, you should be able to see your liner exactly the way you want, and it should plot correctly. That'll conclude the visual style portion of our liner.